Hi, hello. I'm Carolina Liu from 9th grade at CISB right now. First of all, I would just like to say I have never imagined myself to be standing on a stage doing a TED Talk. I have never been one to do lots of public speaking, so this is the first time. So one time, Dr. Sajidis came up to me and asked, do you want to be in a TED Talk? And I was kind of like, what? Me? And he was like, yeah. And I said, I'll think about it. So I did. I went home. I thought about it. I talked to my mom about it. And she was kind of surprised at first. But then she said, why not? It's an opportunity. Take it. If you take a chance, you might like it. You might not. You might succeed. You might not. But you would have been able to say, you tried. And that is always the most important thing. Because you will miss every opportunity you don't take. It seems like it, it seems really obvious, but not a lot of people realize that. Today, today's topic is overcoming barriers. Barriers. It's a really broad word. It could be internal, it could be external, it could be literal, it could be figurative, but they all serve a single purpose. And that is to make your life more difficult. However, it is more rewarding once you've conquered this. But today I'm only going to be focusing on the internal barriers, and because I believe most of us face them at some point, and how we can overcome them. Most of you may be wondering what I mean by internal barriers. I'm talking about overthinking, lack of confidence, guilt, self-doubt, and basically not believing in yourself. Sometimes you think it's the words other people feed you that tears you down inside. But most of the time, I believe it's your own imagination taking a small thing that happens to the next level. The words other people say may lay the foundation of a wall, but your own imagination builds on top and it's high, it, the wall goes higher and higher and soon enough the wall is too high to climb over and you're trapped. And as my English teacher always says, without imagination, there's no fear. I believe the Pavado skill to overcoming these barriers and achieving success is self-confidence, which can be defined by the ability to believe in yourself, to accomplish any task, no matter the odds, the difficulty, or adversity. Self-confidence really is a skill that you need in everyday life, you need it to complete anything and everything. Your performance in school, in tests, on a game, in the sport, or even just a casual conversation is directly affected by your self-confidence. And confidence, it's not something that everyone was born with. And it's not something everyone has at the moment because maybe someone lost it due to something that happened. There are countless factors on why someone doesn't have self-confidence. But I, as I said, it's a skill and it can be developed like any other skill. So today I'm going to introduce the three P's that I've concluded to help you gain self-confidence. They, they are practice, persistence, and pet talks. The first strategy is practice. I'm telling you now, you cannot be confident in something that's new to you. It's, even if you're a magician, it's still not possible that you can be comfortable and confident in something on the first try. Uh, Mal Malcolm Gladwell, the author of the book Outliers, The Story of Success, discusses the 10,000 hour rule, which is, in his words, the key to achieving world-class expertise. The 10,000 hour rule is a pattern he discovered in professionals, in experts, in succeeding people, successful people, that they need to put in 100,000 10,000 hours of effort, or 10,000 hours of practice, or 10,000 tries to be able to achieve world-class expertise. Let's take this soccer goalie story as an example. There was once a soccer goalie uh, recruited for his body conditions. He had the height, he had the size, he had the strength in his entire body, and especially his hands. But every time a ball came at him, he put it onto the ground. That's not what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to catch it, but he couldn't do that, even with his really strong hands. 
So his coach told him a simple solution. That was to kick the ball against the wall 350 times a day, every single day, for eight months. After the eight month period, his hands were callous. He lost complete moisture in his hands, but now he's playing in Europe. It wasn't magic, it wasn't a formula, it wasn't math, it wasn't science, but it was all practice. Also, some people might say it's natural born talent. In this case, it's definitely not. Natural born talent sometimes bring you to about 50%, but putting in all that effort and all that time and energy and practicing can bring you from here to here. And in this case, this goalie, once the ball comes at him now, he wouldn't even have to think about it. He'll just listen to what his body tells him to do. And that is the magic of practicing. The second strategy is persistence. Persistence is important because you, can, you should never accept a one-time failure, a one-time rejection, as a sign to stop, to give up, to walk away. Because that is not how you can reach success. Let's take J.K. Rowling as an example. Many of you may or may not know this, but she was rejected by 12 or 13-ish publishers before she was for her first Harry Potter book was accepted. And it was only for like 1,500 pounds at the time. No one knew it was going to be a world best-selling series. But J.K. Rowling, after 12 tries and 12 rejections, she was still able to stay confident and believe in herself and her book to be able to persist and go find the next publisher. And Dr. Seuss. I'm pretty sure all of us know Dr. Seuss because he's probably the one of the best children's book authors. He's a legend. But he was also rejected 27 times before his first book was allowed to be published. How many of us here are able to say that they can still stay confident after 12 or 27 rejections? I know for a fact that I wouldn't be able to. After one or two, I'd be, I would be thinking, am I doing it right? Is this the right decision? After four or five, I think about and definitely want to give up. After seven or eight, I'm going to burn it, destroy it, tuck it into the like, deepest part of my closet, and never see it again. But that's not the way to success. And that's not the way that they could have gotten to their success. So if they can do it, you and I can do it. If you ever receive rejection or failure, see it as a sign or an opportunity to keep on trying to persist. The third strategy is pet talks. Yes, I know it sounds cheesy, but they're so important. That's because with pet talks, you can take control in your own life in your future, because you are the best person at being you, and no one can tell you otherwise. There are some specific things you can do in your, own, in your life to help you give little pep talks. Maybe slip little notes into your backpack or your locker on days you know you need that confidence, like exam days, or big game days like Akimis or Isaac. I say that self-confidence will lead to success because I'll use myself as an example. Just a few weeks ago, I was in Korea playing a soccer game and I was put on the starting set and it was quite nerve-wracking for me because since I didn't get a lot of practice this season, I was usually a sub. So I never really started the game and it was quite nerve-wracking because the starting set is the best seven players. And I'm just standing there like, they're so good. and then. The more I think about that, the more the less my the more my confidence drops. And when my confidence drops, my confidence drops, my success also drops. So during halftime I thought to myself, that's not the best I can do. That's not my limit. So in the second half, I kept on thinking to myself, the times I play this position so well, the times I keep the ball far away so that it can it will be easier for our goalie. And then that really built up my confidence. And then with my confidence, naturally, my success also went up. Other ways you could do to pet talk is maybe write a full letter to yourself. And you can keep on adding onto it over time. 
about accomplishment, accomplishment, achievements, compliments you've gotten that shows how special and unique and important you are. It's for a day that you know you need that special boost of confidence. Pull it out, read it, you'll feel so much better. Overall, I think sometimes the biggest barrier in your life might just be yourself. But with a little training, you can be really strong. It's all about that last, it's all about the last push you give yourself before you want to give up. Or the last hour you train the week before a big competition. Or let's say the last chapter you, heard, you studied the day before a big exam. Or that final risk you took to go take that chance and look for the one person that will say yes, even after being rejected many times. What I'm saying is, the three P's that I mentioned earlier can definitely help you achieve these uh, goals in your own life. I'm not promising you success. I'm not promising you anything. But what I can promise you is that if you take the chance, there will be a sliver of possibility of success for you. But I can also promise you that if you don't take the chance, and you miss, you miss every chance you don't take. And once you miss some opportunities, they may never come back. Finally, a quote to end my speech. Passion sees no barriers. It leaves fences, jumps hurdles, leaps, uh, penetrates walls to get to its destination of hope. Passion was originally love, but then I changed it so then my speech wouldn't have the wrong idea. Anyways, this, speech, this quote really expresses what I mean by the three P's being able to help you. At last, I want to repeat that confidence is literally everything. You have to believe in yourself. And if you don't, no one else will. Thank you.